Here is how my septic system looks now, and it's all working. I've been using it for about half of a year. So enjoy watching and I'll see you at the end of the video where I share mistakes I made, so you can avoid them. First, you will need to dig a hole. I dug a hole that is 3 meters long, 2.5 meters wide and 1.4 meters deep. The size of the hole allowed me to put 4000 liters tank and have some space to work around them. Afterwards, I leveled the bottom to ensure that all my tanks were at the same level. I also marked the spot where my bottom tank are going to be. Then I dug the hole for the bottom tank. I focused on two things, placing it in the middle and ensuring that it was leveled, as my water pump will be standing there. Next, I tested my water pump to ensure it operates properly in a small tank. Following that, I created a wooden foundation for my septic system's floor. My advice here would be to place some gravel or stone chips under the wood to make it last longer without rooting. Now with the foundation and the bottom tank in place, I'm going to add OSB boards as a floor. Once that's done and the boards are in place, I can begin building a frame. I build the frame using spirit level to ensure that everything is leveled. I also make sure that all corners are 90 degrees. For the corners of the frame, I use 10 cm pole and attach 5 cm pole to them, which allows me to attach some wood across. After completing the frame, I start putting up the roofing sheet that I left over from my house. I use those sheets as the walls. However, I discovered that the sheets are too weak to withstand the ground pressure, so I added additional woods every 30 cm for support. Then I added planks across the wall and 5 cm cubic piece between the horizontal and vertical woods. Once my shed was fully built, I placed the rest of the tanks inside the hole and began digging the trench from the toilet and the kitchen. When I installed the pipes, I ensured that they were at the right angle, which is approximately 14 degree slope. By the way, I use grey color pipelines that are not designed for the outdoor use. My recommendation is to use orange ones that are specifically designed for outdoor conditions. Now it's time to make a holes for those pipeline connections. You can use a drill bit for this purpose, but I didn't have the right size drill bit, so I used a heated piece of metal to burn the hole in the plastic. Let's quickly review how everything is connected and why. We have the first tank, which is a vermicomposting tank. By the way, if you want to find out more about vermicomposting toilet, click the link in the corner. All solids stay in this tank, and the fluid exits through the elbow into our small tank with the water pump. From there, water flows to our second 1000 liter tank. This tank is oxygen free, allowing anaerobic bacteria to do their job. Then water exits from the middle of the tank to our next tank. That's the reason for this elbow. It allows water to exit from the middle, but only when the tank is nearly full. In each tank, the entrance hole is slightly higher than the exit hole. The reason for this, to ensure that the water doesn't flow backwards. It can only move forwards toward the exit. Finally, the pipe goes out through our last hole, where water returns to the environment. Here I will place some stones to prevent running water from damaging the ground. Additionally, the stones will facilitate water seeping back into the ground. After connecting all my pipes between the tanks, I need to connect electricity to my septic system. So I installed the wires and created two sockets, one for the water pump and another one for air compressor. With all those pipes and cables in place, we can now bury them and focus on what is inside the tanks. In this tank, I add some wood chips, soil, sawdust, and a key element of this vermicomposting tank, worms. These worms will literally eat our waste and turn it into compost. The next two tanks will be the ones with the oxygen. I will need to place airstone inside the tank, so you need to make sure they fit through the hole. Once I place them inside the tank, the air compressor with the stones will oxygenate the water allowing aerobic bacteria to create their colonies and clean the water. Okay, so now we can discuss what works and what doesn't in my septic system. Okay, so all of our waste come through that pipe into our first tank. I'm not going to show you what is inside, as it doesn't look very nice. Fluid soaks through the wood chips and other organic materials and comes out through this pipe. Here, make sure you put a lot of silicon to ensure that there are no water leaks. Then it goes into this small tank. Here I made two holes, one 10 cm for the pipe from the first tank and a smaller one for the water to come out, along with the electricity cable and the rope. The rope is needed to ensure my water pump doesn't fall to the side and stop working. The water pump then pumps the water into our second 1000 litre tank. 
Initially, I put straight connection, which didn't work well. My pipe hose was keep bending and water was either blocking or running slower. To fix that, I put this connection and it works perfectly. Now let's talk about our two tanks with aerobic bacteria. For both tanks, I put air stones, which oxygenate water really nicely. But they have downside, they keep blocking and to make them work properly, I have to clean them every couple of weeks. So I tried these bubble bar air diffusers and they were even worse. So I made my own one using a plastic hose and a few ceramic filters to create my own diffuser. It works okay, but I'm still testing it. Once I'm sure it works well, I will show you in my video. Next is the air compressor where you don't want to save your money or you will end up paying double like I did. First, I bought this small 18 watts air compressor, which was too weak to oxygenate both tanks. So I had to buy this 70 watts, which is a bit too powerful, but better more than not enough. Ideally for this septic system, a compressor would be between 35 and 50 watts. I'm still using both, but once I'm done with my diffusers, I will connect everything to 70 watts compressor. Okay, now the roof. What I've done here, I put roofing sheets, added soil on the top and sawed the lawn. So during the summer, there will be nice grass over here. And in the winter, it will help protect from freezing temperatures. Coldest night was minus 21 and there was no problem. Okay, so thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel, hit that like button and I'll see you in my next video.